It's Trench Talk for your weekly dose of metal and heavy music. I'm your host, Vlad Vickeris from MetalTrenches.com. As always, if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. So a couple weeks ago, I had the pleasure of interviewing Denver Van Noctambulist, and during that conversation, they brought up some Icelandic influences. And so this week, I am glad to finally share a Icelandic black metal group called Kalakur, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that is how I will pronounce it henceforth. And this is their new album, Heart of Lead, coming out via Debimer Morty Productions. release, Kalakur was born in Reykjavik, Iceland in early 2016 in order to create progressive and experimental music straight from the heart. Emerging from the ashes of promising black metal group Draugsoul, Kalakur make the absurdity of human experience palpable through a next-level synthesis of melancholy, intricacy, and aggression. Heart of Lead is a phenomenal debut album, structured as a journey from sadness through despair to total mental collapse. The album begins at a sunrise colored with reflective purity of viola, gradually becoming darker and stranger with each following song as it builds towards a never-ending sunset. They close in saying, Heart of Lead possesses the depth of feeling present in the finest Icelandic black metal, that particular sense of the saudada, a longing for something missing, absent, and just out of reach. And I can vouch for the fact that listening to this album just gives you this intense feeling of sorrow and despair. And that title, Heart of Lead, really does capture the weight behind these emotions. And while I'm going to get into plenty of references in terms of this band's playing style and what they actually sound like, I most closely equate the atmosphere and palpable feeling to fall somewhere, oddly enough, between Deathspell Omega and Fallujah. And while those bands definitely come from very different genres and overall sport pretty different aesthetics, they share that same really thick wall of sound, emotionally engaging type of atmosphere. Kalakur kind of alternates between these two extreme polarities, with Deathspell Omega being much more on the dark, nihilistic, ugly kind of side of things, and then other times swinging more towards Fallujah, where there is this more melodic sense of hope and potential. Now, how they achieve this atmosphere is through a wide variety of different approaches, playing styles, and references to other bands that seem to be clear influences on their work. I described it as a cross-section of some of my favorite progressive albums from over the years, as well as some more recent ones, such as Insomnium's Winter's Gate and Erdraucher's With Hunger Undying. The second song, The Descent, has this very tool sounding riff that starts it off with these very psychedelic effects and proggy approach. And the more I listened to the song, the more I had this strange sense of like, I know this, I've heard this before, almost like deja vu. And one voice in my head kept saying, no, no, it must just be tool. Um, and that's all it is. But the other told me that there's there's something deeper there. So I listened and I listened and I listened. And finally, I had one of those moments where it just came to me. It's like when you're having a conversation where you can't remember like an actor's name or something and it bothers you for days and days. And then there's this cathartic satisfaction when you get to text your friend in all caps what it is. And in this case, it was the title track of Enslave's 
Rune. That song has a very similar riff, and the entire album actually utilizes very similar guitar effects. And this reference is really appropriate overall, as Kalakur often call back to Enslaved's kind of mid-career when they were first transitioning from a pure black metal band to a more progressively focused one. has this very coiling serpent-like quality to it and it's like wrapping itself around the listener and it starts to build up with those drums and i have to say the drums on this album are really incredible too very powerful they provide so much different texture and various different pacing you get the more traditional black metal blast beats, then machine gun double bass that makes me think at times of Behemoth, and also some very tribal sounding tom arrangements. This is also part of the genius of the album overall. It's a very complex and rewarding album when taken as a whole, but there are many more, let's call it accessible elements that help to really draw the listener in and also create an opening for the more casual metal listener. Again, the tool reference seems appropriate and is a good example. There are so many people out there, even those who otherwise don't listen to more extreme types of metal, that know and enjoy tool. So these elements end up being like the Pied Piper capturing the ears of these listeners as if to say, Hey, you know this. Come on in. The water's fine. It's safe here. And then once they're locked in, that's when the album starts to unfold into more technical performances and grim vocals, dissonant sounds, and progressive song structures. Basically the stuff that tends to turn those casual listeners away if that's their introduction but it may end up working better here because of the gradual switch. It's really a desensitizing process, and I was interested thinking about that while I was listening to this album because there's actually a strategy in counseling known as gradual exposure that follows this premise. It can be used for a number of things, but the simplest example is probably working with a phobia. Let's say you're afraid of snakes. You wouldn't just come in and throw a snake in that person's lap in the first counseling session. That would probably not go well. So what you want to do is you develop this slow process to move them from not being able to have anything to do with snakes to being able to potentially hold a snake. And what that may look like is maybe first you just talk about snakes and then you look at pictures of snakes and maybe watch some videos of snakes. Maybe you visit the zoo and you look at snakes from a distance through the glass and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You basically just work your way up through these increasingly more stressful situations so that your body can adjust and you're allowing your system to develop a capacity to handle whatever the stimulus is without spiraling into complete dysregulation. And at times, Heart of Lead feels like it's doing just that. It's a gradual exposure process for listeners who may not yet have the capacity to understand and appreciate more complex and extreme forms of music. And as I'm saying that, it may kind of come off as pretentious or elitist, but really it's just an idea that interested me while I was listening to this album. Now, as I keep saying, there's a lot of different sounds and influences on this album, but one of my favorite tracks that I feel like truly showcases all of the elements in one place is Internal Contradiction. 
this track again starts with a very enslaved sounding opening before quickly kicking into high gear with these very mathy technical drum patterns that keep shifting and changing it's not that consistent machine gun sound that we're used to when it comes to blast beats and double bass it's more like random burst fire coming in varying amounts it kind of sounds like soldiers ducking in and out of cover and randomly spraying their automatic weapons at each other and it just is very impressive and adds this unpredictable quality to the listening experience. And then it opens up into more of a post-metal tinged avant-garde black metal part a la Despel Omega. I'm also getting some ulcerate vibes here. Very melancholy staring into the abyss kind of moment and just when you've settled into that we move into again more of a progressive death metal space adding more atmosphere and strings along the way and then finally around three minutes and 45 seconds there is this incredible climax that is just absolute perfection it's definitely the high point of an album with many great moments This amazing transition happens with this great punctuated start-stop riff. It's something straight out of like Blackwater Park or My Arms, Your Hearse. That classic bouncy Opeth guitar sound hits you like a ton of bricks and even more so when the drums kick in to match the timing of the guitar, creating this kind of Morse code effect. intense pounding double bass building up like this final climb up the mountain with much more melodic guitar harmonies this is again when i start thinking of insomnium especially again that last album winter's gate which was very progressive in nature the violin coming back in again also giving me some a forest of stars vibes and it's just so beautiful This song is just going back to that emotional piece, very all over the place. I mean, it makes you feel so many of things. There's these darker moments of just intense despair. And and then finally, this final build, again, brings me more back to that positive side of the spectrum where it feels like you're just sort of clawing your way up out of that void into something of meaning again. to say i was even more impressed when i found out that this band is a duo it sounds like it could easily be five or six people working together to create this mountain of sound and multi-layered experience but it's just two people and my hat's off to them because i know plenty much larger bands who haven't even come close to creating such a lush technically proficient and emotionally engaging experience and if i can just give props regarding one more track it should be neuro delirium 
once more covering such an amazingly broad swath of sounds and textures. There's this really cool part that starts around the second third with a very catchy layering of two guitars, one more groovy and rhythmic, the other more hooky with this melodic lead. It's fairly simplistic, but comes together so perfectly. And then, even better, when we get to the final third, there's an amazing guitar solo that sounds very much like something Mike Ackerfelt would throw in, again with the punctuated proggy backing guitar. dun 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 Classic it makes me think of when I first found out about Opeth and was listening to Morning Rise and Blackwater Park, Still Life, all those albums. And they, they take that style and instead of it feeling like a cheap imitation, they just kind of roll it into a larger picture and it just becomes part of this patchwork of amazing songwriting and composition and really does become greater than the sum of its parts in the process. So of course all of this to say Heart of Lead is a really fantastic album. It's one of my first super noteworthy albums of 2019. I always kind of add to my year-end lists as I go along and then I kind of narrow things down as I get closer to posting and you better believe that this one is already on the list. Calicur are an incredibly talented duo on all fronts. I really can't wait to hear more from them. Scoring wise, I gave them a 10 for enjoyability. This album is amazing from start to finish. Like I said, very engaging and really amazing how they wove in all those really more accessible elements amongst the more complex and technical parts. And then speaking of which, the musicianship also 10 out of 10, perfectly arranged, impressively layered, It's just composed to such this amazing degree and reaches such epic levels. And then on top of that, the performances themselves individually can get quite technical. And finally, for innovation, this isn't the most original album I've heard, but I did give it an 8 out of 10 for that because it is it definitely stands out from the pack so all this rounding out to a 9.3 a nice sturdy a for heart of lead definitely buy this album again it is out via debber morty productions february 15th it's time again for some shout outs i've actually got four for you today and i'm gonna start off with ills with pain don't hurt via pogo ills is a portland based noise rock and sludge group and this is a ep that is equal parts vicious and hypnotic It's for fans of things like daughters jesus lizard and han So I was still super primed from my, what I described as like a spiritual experience with Daughter's latest album, and then also to an extent the Ken Mode album that both came out last year. Ready for more of that. I'm ready for more strange and hypnotic music in that vein. And so I was super pleased to get this album from ills because even though it's really short it's like maybe 15 minutes long it's awesome 
and really consistent. It's really great for both rock listeners and metal listeners alike because it really runs the gamut from like psychedelic desert stoner rock to more like metallic hardcore with a dose of kind of Mike Patton on the vocals. This guy swings around in his delivery between more of like a clutch kind of singing style and then some really extreme vicious almost like blackened vocals so it makes for a really diverse and interesting experience i saw a lot of people get excited when i posted the review for this it seemed like it got quite the reaction i pressed play on this thing with pretty much no expectations and walked away from it already thinking about man these guys are right in my backyard maybe it's time to track them down for a face-to-face -face interview because i am super interested to hear where all of their influences come from and what led to this album happening so check it out Next up, we've got Psalm with The All Devouring. This is a very emotionally engaging post-black band out of St. Petersburg, Russia. For fans, though, of things like So Hideous, Basa Danaga, and Numenorian, I not long ago made a list that was making the rounds that was sort of my 11 post-black bands that I felt were more deserving of attention than Death Heaven. Death Heaven, of course, being kind of the current benchmark of what Post Black is. They're obviously not like the first Post Black band, but as soon as Sunbather came out, like everybody was interested in that sound and wanted to kind of ape that style. But I'm not a huge Death Heaven fan. Like, they're fine. I can appreciate them, but I've just heard so many other post-black bands that I feel like are even more deserving of that attention and the spotlight, and Psalm is another one of those bands that I would definitely like to add to that list. They've really got kind of the most exciting elements all in one place. I'm hearing kind of the unrelenting, frenetic, energetic drumming of Bossa Danaga, the more epic atmosphere of So Hideous, and then also still some very extreme black metal vocals that still have that vicious edge to them that I associate kind of with Maul, which is a band that I shared last year that I was very impressed with and even heard from some people that are more just pure black metal bands saying that they really appreciated that album. So if you liked that and you're interested in all of those bands that I just listed, you should definitely give the all-devouring a listen. Check it out. All right, next up we've got Herod with Somber Design via Pelagic Records. This is a proggy Swiss sludge band. It has an appearance from Bill Steer, who plays with Carcass, and this is also their first album with a former vocalist of The Ocean. I'd recommend it for fans of Wovoka, Gojira, and Alaskan. And so regarding the Gojira reference, I said that if Gojira kind of swung in a heavier direction and took on more of a sludge sound, they would probably sound a lot like Herod. So obviously Gojira is kind of gone in a little bit more of a rock direction lately, which is fine. Not really what I go to them for. But if they had stuck to heavier vocals and more intense distortion 
then this is what we might have gotten in an alternate universe, which makes me happy because I heard that last Gojira album and I was like, this is good, but I really wanted something else. And I feel like Somber Design is that something else. Herod have actually shared the stage with Gojira, which kind of makes sense. I'm wondering if some of that rubbed off on them because there's actually songs on this album that even have that, if you know that trademark kind of squelchy guitar slide sound that Gojira are known for, that they've kind of had on all of their albums, you hear it and you instantly go, oh yeah, that's a Gojira song. They use some of that, especially on this super heavy song, Reckoning, which is probably my favorite on the album. So great union of proggy riffing and some progressive song structures with groovy sledgehammer sludge great album start to finish check it out And last but definitely not least, we've got Dead Kiwis with Systematic Home Run. This is a mathcore, hardcore band based out of Lyon, France. Another noisy, chaotic, very technical outing for fans of ARMS, The Chariot, The Dillinger Escape Plan. Really great just showcase of just raucous mathcore hardcore and grind it gets pretty darn aggressive and fast just really pure mayhem packed with references to botch again the dillinger escape plan early norma Jean. these guys know where the scene comes from and they are paying a lot of worship to that but putting their own spin on it their own trademark Lots of great guitar riffs on this thing that will make your head spin and awesomely intense barked vocals. This is another short EP. It goes by very quickly. And I said that with their ADHD approach to songwriting and also the clear sense of humor they have, I think it's appropriate to call them like the C-Lab or Aqua Teen Hunger Force of the math core scene right now. Really loving what these guys are putting out. And I highly recommend you pick this one up on Bandcamp. Check it out. <laughs> will do it for this week's trench talk as always i appreciate those of you who are listening it's been really exciting to watch the metrics um, youtube views are way up especially for some of the interviews that we did the podcast views are going up as well again we are available on youtube Castbox, buzzsprout itunes podcasts and bitshoot and regardless of where you subscribe, I also recommend subscribing to that YouTube channel because I have also been posting song premieres there and hope to do some other content that may not make it to the podcast. So definitely do that. Find that big red subscribe button, press it, make sure that you're getting notifications. Give us a like if you enjoy what we're doing here and all of the links to the bands that I've talked about and the albums that you want to listen to. If you want to check them out, buy them, see the full reviews. Those links are down below in the description. But for now, I am going to sign off and I will see you in the trenches. (laughs) 